How y'all doing? Good, good. good. Uh, you could probably look at me and tell I'm kin to somebody here at this school. But uh, Ms. Latchison, that's my little sister, the principal, uh, Daphne Latchison. So glad to, glad to see everyone. Uh, my name is Dwight Johnson. Played with the New York Giants, uh, Philadelphia Eagles, and the New England Patriots. Uh, I'm a Waco as well. So I was once set where y'all are sitting. Uh, went to Waco High, uh, went to Lake Air Middle, all that. So Viking Hills, leading all that. But anyway, um, I own a training facility now, two of them actually, Total Athlete Sports Complex. And I live in Atlanta, Georgia. So I train athletes like yourself on a daily basis. We have over 85 kids that have signed D1 scholarships out of our program since 2009. Ain't that cool? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we take guys like you, girls, volleyball, basketball, football, and we help them reach their full potential. Um, also do a national lineman camp called the Big Man Takeover. Michael Strahan, uh, one of my football colleagues, when I played with the New York Giants, is my spokesperson for it. He goes around speaking. He shows up at some of our camps and all that. And, um, and we train line, train football players. I look at it like this, guys. I want to help you reach your full potential. Right now, y'all are what? 14, 15 years old? You know, around that age? And stuff is cool. So guess what? You have no if, if coulda, woulda, shouldas because you got your whole life in front of you. You understand what I'm saying? My nephew gave me this shirt here. And it's, it's real symbolic, and it has money, respect, power. I know in the world some people say, well, if you get the money first, then you get the respect. Then you get the power. And that's total opposite. From a guy like me, when I was your age, I was once, I used to get in trouble a lot. And, and Daphne can tell you, you know, I was her big brother. Whenever she had problems, she called me. You know, I put the fire out. You know, I, I fight. I did everything. I'd been kicked out of school. I've been all kinds of stuff. But a lot of times, guys, it was because of the crowd I was hanging around. It was my environment. You can't be successful if you, got, you hang around a whole bunch of chickens. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's picking at the ground because everybody's looking down. If you want to be successful, you got to be your own man. So I always say out of money, power, respect, respect is the first thing you must have to be successful in this world. If you don't have respect, you have nothing at all. Respect makes the world go around. You understand? So if I'm looking at you and I see you sagging your pants, walking around like you don't care, I'm going to treat you like the bottom of my shoe. Nothing. And that's how this world looks at us sometimes. you got to understand when you're black, Hispanic, you got a lot of things working against you. And I'm just talking real. You understand? So why make it harder for yourself already when it's already you got the odds stacked against you? You understand what I'm saying? Respect. You, somebody has to respect you in order to give you a job. Didn't nobody say, hey, uh, Dwight, uh, I'm going to just let you come in the NFL. They had to respect what I did. Now, I played on a 1 in 10 Baylor football team. Now, Baylor back then, we started out decent. Then by the time I seen year, we went down to 1 in 10. You see what I'm saying? But I was the team captain, and out of all, of, all the teams, though we losing so bad, they still wanted to pick me up. So they had respect for what I did. They said, this guy on his 1 in 10 football team, but he's a baller. He make plays. I play defensive line, defensive end, defensive tackle. So a person has to respect what you do in order to give you an opportunity. They got to respect your skills. They got to respect you as a person. If you don't have respect, you have nothing at all. You might as well just be a hobo on the street. Understand, anything you do, you must have somebody's respect. It's not like it's cool. I can like you all day. Oh, you're a nice guy. You cool people, I like you. But that's not I mean I'm gonna give you a million dollars just because I like you. What value can you add to this world other than going around, getting in trouble, being silly, act crazy? That don't mean nothing. It doesn't take no skills to act stupid. If you watch these reality shows, they don't take no skills for these ladies on these love and hip hop to fuss and fight each other. That don't take any skills to do that. And, and you've got a lot of negative influences out there that you gotta realize, guys, that's, that, that's just TV. You in the real world. Everybody's not going to be a football player. Everybody's not going to be a rapper. Everybody's not going to be a singer or whatever. You got to get out there and you got to make something happen. What is your gift? What is that, something that you, God has blessed you with? You see what I'm saying? I want all of y'all to answer that question. Because it says in the Bible that a man's gift will make room for him. And it will bring him before great men and kings. So you got to find that first thing. What is that? That gift I have that I can get respect. 
where everybody can respect me. Because understand, you have something on the inside of you that's, that's very valuable. You may not know right now. Like I didn't find out my talent to play football until I got in high school. I didn't know I was this big and strong. I knew I had size. I knew I was strong. But, I, but the NFL saw something in me. You know, like, hey, he's an NFL player. You see what I'm saying? And it took to another level. Now, a lot of people know my little brother, Derrick Johnson, right? You know him. He's, he's all world and stuff. But, but there, before there was a Derrick Johnson, there was a Dwight Johnson. You understand what I'm saying? I had to pave the way for him to be where he's at. How many of y'all have little brothers and sisters? Raise your hand. Don't you know they're going to learn from your success and they're going to learn from your failure? So guess what? If you do good, nine times out of ten, they're going to fall behind your footsteps and do good. Now, if you mess up and screw up, they're going to say, hey, I don't, I don't want to be like him or her. Or they may say, no, I'm going to do something different. Or they may just stumble and fall just like you stumble and fall. You see what I'm saying? Understand, always set a good example. That's about respect. You never know who's watching you. Everybody, everybody has something special to give in this world. And my little brother, he watched everything I did. He watched how I talked when I did interviews on TV. He went to all my football games. See, he had somebody that, that was in front of him that exemplified how to be a person of character. And you have to have that. You young boys, you, if you don't have a father in your life, so what? You have to find somebody that you can emulate your life after, that you can look up to. You got it? Whether it's an uncle, whether it's a football coach, whether it's a teacher, somebody. Young men, you need strong, positive males in your life. If you don't have them, you will fall by the wayside. Do you understand me? Young girls the same way. You need, if you, your mother's around, that's good. If she's positive, listen to your mom. If you don't have mama's real negative and stuff, find a teacher or somebody around that you can latch on to and soak knowledge and information from. I'm telling you, it's very vital to you being successful. Because this world is not easy. This world doesn't care if you, if you don't have a daddy. This world doesn't care uh, if you didn't have, go home and have nothing to eat. This world, it's the only thing this world wants to know is, what can you do for me? What kind of value can you add to this world to make you special? I go and speak at a lot of places, but they ain't speaking to me just because I'm Dwight Johnson. It's because they respect what I did in the past and what I'm doing now. You see what I'm saying? See, nobody want to be around losers. You feel me? Nobody wants to be around losers. So you got to make up in your mind, what is it that makes me special? Everybody has something that makes them special, but you got to ask God that personal question. If you, I hope you are a Christian, but if not, but you got to ask them that personal question. He can answer that for you. When I was 15 years old is when I actually prayed to God and I asked him, I said, God, bless me to be a standout football player at Waco High. University, Waco High. Bless me to get tons of scholarships. I had 35 scholarship offers when I came out of school in, in, in 1995. Okay. <laughs> Help me to make it to the NFL and play in the NFL. And he gave me everything I asked for. Everything I asked for. I got a chance. I didn't start in the NFL. Yeah, I played four years, four to five years. But that's cool. But I always, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. I asked myself this question. If I would have been detailed in asking God what, what I wanted. Like when I got to the NFL, I should have said, make me an all pro. Because honestly, I was just as good as Michael Strahan and any of them guys. Make me, make me a pro bowl, line, pro bowl defensive lineman. So what I'm telling you is when you pray to him, be detailed in it. You understand? Like I was detailed, but at 15 years old, if I would have gone back, I should have said, make me this and that because I saw visions of it. I had visions of me being in the NFL in which I made it and played some years and started and stuff like that. But I had visions of me being an all pro, but I didn't speak it into existence. You understand? So what, listen, blessings and curses are in the power of the tongue. But now, hey, I'm a successful businessman now. I learned from it. I said, I had to look back, look back at God. I said, I can't be mad because I got to be blessed because God took me places where no man could have taken, taken me. You understand? I've done some great things, but I could have done greater on that football field. So that's why I'm doing it now as a businessman to be even greater. Going in detail about what I want. Always speak, never speak negative words in your life. Never speak, I can't do this. Because you know what? You shoot yourself in the foot. Whatever you put in the atmosphere, it's going to come back to you. 
You understand? So never speak, oh, I can't do this, or, or talk bad about somebody. Watch that. Always speak positive affirmations over yourself. When you get up in the morning, say this, I'm a successful uh, young man and young woman. Hey, I'm a, I'm a great track runner or basketball player or I'm a straight A student. Put it into effect. Keep saying that. I guarantee you, once you start speaking it and keep speaking it in deep detail when you speak things in your life of what you want, it's going to start coming to pass. What's going to happen is your actions going to start lining up with what you're saying. It's going, it's crazy, it's crazy, but, but it's all about the power of the words. Your tongue can bless you or it can curse you. Don't let people speak negative over your life. That meaning whether it's a mama, whether it's your daddy, mom, oh, you're just like your no good daddy. You're this and that. You Trust me, I've heard it all. Rebuke that. You understand? Because all that is, is, is just taking you down the wrong road, messing with your mind and say, well, maybe I am no good like my daddy. You know what I'm saying? Because understand, when David beat Goliath, how he beat Goliath, the first way he beat Goliath, he beat him in his mind. He was only your size. Stand up. David was your size. Goliath was to the ceiling. And all, a lot of guys that were my age were saying, oh, I ain't fighting that big Philistine. Look how big he is. He's strong and stuff. He got that sword. Maybe he'll chop us to pieces. But a little guy like him made up his mind that I can beat that giant. I can kill him. So the battle is always won in the mind. So before he uh, uh, slung that slingshot and hit him in the head, he killed him in his mind first. You see what I'm saying? He knew he can do it. Never talk yourself out of something. I don't care how great it may be. I don't care how hard your test may be. I don't care what position you're in. Never say you can't do anything. You understand? Because it has negative implications on it. Always speak the positive affirmations over your life, guys. I want to talk about four types of people that you need to watch out for in life. And not be like, and some you can be like. The first person is a chicken. A chicken is a person that's scared to take chances. Scared to do, always got their head down, letting people pick on, letting people bully you. Hey man, give me your lunch money, you know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. They never want to speak up for themselves. They got to have somebody else speak up for them. Never be that type of person. It takes courage to be different. It takes courage to stand out. It takes courage to stand up. You understand? Never be like, because a chicken is a person that just left life passing by. If you're a chicken now, you be a chicken when you're an adult. Even when you get it working for somebody, they'll be always picking on you. It never, because you never passed that test. You never stood up and said, hey, man, leave me alone. You wait for other people to stand up for you. My daddy once told me this when I went out to play with the Philadelphia Eagles. He said, Dwight, remember that a scared man won't accomplish much in life because he's scared to take chances. He said, the road may not be cut out for you. He said, I know, he said, I know we've never been in the NFL. You're the first person to break that barrier in our family, but never be scared to blaze your own trail. And I always took that with me wherever I went. When I had to beat out 20 guys for one roster spot with the Philadelphia Eagles, and I broke this finger on the first day of practice. And they told me, they said, well, you can't, you can't practice. I said, I'll be darned if I can't. I said, because I remember what I said when I was 15 years old. I was going to make it to the NFL, and I was going to be able to start in the NFL. And I ain't going to let this one broken finger stop me. You see this finger, guys? It reminds me of the struggle. So anytime life gets hard for me, I look back at this finger, and, it, and I realize what all I had to go through to get where I'm at. I realized when I left home, he was a baby. My sister was uh, in college and stuff like that. And I told him, I gave my little brother Derek, he was in high school, I gave him my car. And I said, I'm not coming back here not successful. When I come back here, I'm going to be an NFL player. I'm going to make this team with the Philadelphia Eagles. And every day, the coach always told me. He spoke negative on me. He said, I'm going to send your butt back home, Johnson. I'm going to send you back to Waco where you belong. I said, I ain't going back to Waco. I can't go back to Waco. I got too many people dependent on me. You understand? See, when you ever get that attitude, guys, where, where, where life just gets so hard, but you know what? I can't turn around. I got to keep pressing because I got too many people dependent on me. You got to keep fighting. I don't care how bad they throw dirt in your face and knock you down. You got to keep fighting because life is going to be hard. And life is all about how you get back up. I don't care how many times you get knocked down. Yeah, y'all over in this school, y'all should be in the Waco High Midway. The world has rejected you. Take it personal. The world don't want you. They put you over here together. 
You got to make a difference. You got to let them know that you that, that you're something to be respected. You understand? The stone that was rejected in the Bible was the stone that became a cornerstone of the whole building. Just because you reject it doesn't mean God is over for you. Your whole life is ahead of you. Take it personal. I don't want to see y'all here. If you got a chance to go back to, to public school, it's cool. I mean, it, if you stay here, it's great too. Don't get me wrong, but learn from it. Learn something. Be great. You got it? Don't keep making the same mistakes over and over. Understand some of y'all are tripping and falling over what your parents did and you're doing the same thing. You're falling down generational curses. Generational cycle. Well, my daddy got in trouble when he was my age. Guess what? You tripping and falling because you don't know your past. You don't know where you came from. So sometimes you get hit from behind and you trying to fight. fight. You don't know where the lick's coming from because you find generational cycles that, that's been going on for your parents, your grandparents, and you have a chance to break them. What are you going to do with your life? Is it going to stop with y'all or is it going to keep going? Because opportunity, hey, if you're not ready, it's going to keep going to the next person. So if you're not ready, it's going to go down to your kids. And it's going to say, all right, you ready? If they're not ready, it's going to keep going. It's going to keep passing you up. Don't let opportunity pass you by. You understand? Opportunity here. Make it right while you still have a chance. Why are you 13, 14, 15 years old? You got it? Understand, guys, life is serious. You only get one life to live. Live it to the best. When I was in ninth grade, that's when I finally got right now. Listen, I'm tell you, I used to be, I used to be heck. My sister will tell you, I used to get, I used to be hell. I did. And you can edit this whatever you want, but I was tough. I used to always get, I would get kicked out of school, but I was always finding myself around the wrong people. You know what I'm saying? I got kicked out of school during the Rodney King uh, incident back in April the 29th, 1992. It was a group of guys at our school at the ninth grade center. It's ninth grade center. That's Indian Spring Park. Now that's what y'all call it, Indian Springs, wherever the ninth grade center was on the Brazos River, that school. That's Indian Springs now. Well, it was a guy by the name of Bobby Lee that had, he was a gang member. He took broomsticks and broke them and wrapped them in duct tape. What happened was the Rodney King verdict was when they, the police beat that black man and, and they got, he got off scot-free. The police did. So everybody was mad. So it was a shot that went around the world. They was shooting and killing over there in the Swats, L.A. It went from the West Coast to the East Coast. We're in Texas. We had a lot going on. We had guys that was walking up to white Caucasian kids and just hitting them in the face with sticks and beating them up just because the Rodney King verdict wasn't, didn't work in our favor. And guess what? I'm the young, dumb 15-year-old. I'm walking to my locker, and a guy run, running from the police said, Hey, Dwight, put this stick in your locker. And my dumb butt said, okay, here you go. Put it in my locker. Man, and went back to class, didn't think nothing of it. Sat down, 30 minutes later, the canine dog with the police came to me and said, where's Dwight Johnson at? We need to get him out of class. And that time, I didn't think twice about it. I said, what do they want with me? So they pulled me out of class. They said, walk me to my locker. They said, open up your locker. And I said, uh, open up my locker? What's, I didn't do anything. They said, open up your locker. Then I thought at the last minute, I dug it. That sticks in my locker. So I act like I forgot the combination. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I, I, I don't even go to my locker that much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they said, well, you don't open it. We're going to open it. They open the lock. They want the stick in my locker. They kicked me out of school, put me in juvenile. Ninth grade. I'm sitting there in juvenile. Thought I was tough. Stay up there crying. My mom was a school teacher. She come up there to get me out. Couldn't get me out. There wasn't nothing she can do to get me out. Nothing she can do. I was sitting there just, just, just in that holding cell, just, just looking at like, man, why did I do that? But it's the same thing over and I was guilty by association. But the gang leader, named Bobby Lee, he's probably around here to this day. And he said, they called him and said, was Dwight Johnson involved in this gang related activity? And he said, no, he wasn't. He said, let him go. Now understand, he was already taken in. He was already kicked out of school. He could have been like the Nino Brown, from Dudek City, if I'm going down, I'm taking everybody with me. He could have did that. But he said, nah, he's a good dude, let him go. And that's the only reason I was able to walk out of there, that police station, with my mom, because that gang leader had great, he was gracious enough to say, don't, he, he, he wasn't a part of it. Ain't that something? And that's why I'm standing in front of you today. 
And my life changed from there on out. I got serious about football. I got serious about my studies. I stopped getting tripped up over this dumb stuff like y'all are getting tripped up over it. You know what I'm saying? It's the reason I came down here. I was down here to celebrate my mama's 70th birthday party. But my sister told me, come over here and speak to, speak to some, some youth. And whenever I have opportunity to speak to somebody and add value, I'm going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because I once was a young Waco youth that used to get in trouble. But I want to help you know where you're going so you won't trip and fall in front of you. You know what I mean? I'll tell you that, hey, there's a, there's a stumbling block in front of you. Go around it or go over it. You understand? So those with a chicken mentality. The next one is a, uh, a vulture. Those are people that are your critics. They're saying, oh, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna be successful. You ain't gonna be, you ain't gonna do nothing. They're always talking negative about you. They wait for you to fall. Those are people that's in the stands, that's you no know, rooting, that's rooting against you. You know what I'm saying? Rooting for you to fail. Thank you, y'all. God, I sweat easy. You gotta you understand. I just got through working out about an hour ago. So <laughs> I sweat easy. But excuse me, but those are the people that don't want to see you succeed. You got vultures out there now that sitting up there talking about y'all. Well, you know, that, you know that, that such and such girl is over in that school over there. She can't get it right. They can't wait. You know, they just happy to see you fail. Everybody's not, listen guys, understand, everybody's not on your side. You got, you got a lot of people that's rooting for you. But outside of here, you don't have a lot of people rooting for you. You understand? So you got to make it right. So watch them vultures. They can't stop anything. If God is before me, who can be against me? You understand? If he is before me, who can be against me? Can't no man stop me. I don't care what you say. The key to success is overcoming people's doubts of you. Saying that you can't make it. Saying that you can't make the 53-man roster that be not 20 people. Saying that you ain't going to graduate high school and you ain't going to go to college. There are going to always be naysayers out there. But you got to always prove them wrong. You understand? So watch out for them vultures. And don't let them distract you. Don't let them snatch your dream away from you like this. Take it, they just snatch your dream away from you. Don't let nobody snatch your dream away from you. You got it? You hold on to your dream, man. If this is something you really want to do, you don't let nobody take it away from you. Because they will try. You got dream killers out here. They will want to see you succeed. A dog never barks at a parked car. You understand? You understand that analogy? If, you, if, you, if, 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 a, if a car is driving and you're going somewhere, that dog going to try to distract you. He's going to try to run. Y'all seen a, a, a dog run out the car? It's funny, ain't it? But he, after a while, he got to get back on the porch because he can't go where that car is going. He just want to distract you, hopefully make you wreck or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But at some point, he got to get his behind back on that porch and bark at the next car going down. But if that car ain't moving nowhere, he ain't worried about you. He said, he ain't got no potential. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna chase him. He ain't going nowhere. He right where I want him. She's right where I want him. But anytime you try to do the right thing, you're gonna always have adversity, people telling you what you can't do because they're jealous. It takes courage, guys, to get out there and be great. Greatness is being better than your best. Whatever your best is, don't try to be like uh, Tom Brady or whatever. Be better than your best. Run your own race. If you can keep Every day, being better than your best, you would get somewhere in life. You got that? Then the next person is a crow. Now, majority of the world are crows. We talked about what? Chickens, vultures, now we on crows. Crows are the, pretty much the people in the majority. They just, hey, I'm fine with life. I got me a nice truck. I got me a nice car, which is the majority of the world. I'm just fine just being here. Don't mess with me. I won't mess with you type deal. I go to work. Punch my play clock, um, punch my clock, you know, sign him out, work eight hour shift, come home, hey, go to the lotto store, play the lottery, come home, sit there and feed the kids, sit on my couch and watch TV. Don't mess with me, I won't mess with you. They don't understand that there's a higher purpose. Crows like to fly in flocks. They fly together. They don't fly too high, but they ain't like chickens. But they right there in the middle. They just like, I'm just, I'm just satisfied with life. Never get satisfied with life. You understand? Because there's always another level to go. When I got to the NFL, I could sit back and say, oh, man, I've done good. Nah, no, listen, I had to keep going. Never get satisfied with just being mediocre. Because that's the that complacency is the, is the biggest disease of anything. Just being complacent with life. Oh, I'm good. Uh, I may work out today. No, I'm going to work out tomorrow and this and that. Before you say it, you just gain another 20 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Because you're complacent in your mind. 
majority of the world are followers. You understand? It takes courage to be a leader. So don't just fly in formation with the crows. You know what I'm saying? Now, the last one is an eagle. An eagle flies at least a thousand feet higher than any other bird. Do you ever see eagles flying with other eagles? No. So what I'm saying is sometimes to get where you're going, you can't go take everybody with you. You got to go by yourself. You see what I'm saying? Because the higher you go in life, the harder it gets. Because success is never easy. But it's for the one that endures, that keeps pressing, that learns from their mistakes. Because you see that eagle, he's like this. He's soaring. He's soaring. He ain't trying to flap it. A bird does this because they're afraid to fall. That's what a crow does. But an eagle, he let the wind carry him. He's so high, he trusts the wind beneath his wings. You understand? Because sometimes you get so high, you can't trust your own strength. You, are, you, you end up messing it up. He end up breaking his wings if he try to flop uh, like that because the turbulence is so strong. So he lets the wind carry him. Just like faith. When you're higher you go, you got to let faith carry you. You can't trust your own might to do stuff. Because if you try, you'll hurt yourself or you, or you won't get done. When you get to a certain level, like I tell you, the level I'm at in business, I got to have faith. If I don't have faith, it won't work. I do a lot of stuff in my own might, but what I, when I have faith, it adds super to my natural. You understand? It makes it look easy. Everybody say, oh, it looks easy. Like, I'm, it ain't easy. I'm like, you know, that wind's so strong. I'm like, I'm trying to hold it together. But it looks easy the higher you go, guys. So be an eagle. Anything worth having, you're going to have to work hard, and it's going to be obstacles in front of you. But if you, just because you got hit in the mouth don't mean you back up. You hit them back. You feel me? You swing. When life hits you, you hit it back. You fire back. My dad's always say, you fire back. Fire back. He hit you, you fire back. He hit you, you fire back. He hit you, you fire back. You keep firing back. Keep firing back till you knock him down. You understand? So guys, man, just be that eagle that you're called to be. All right? Learn from where you're at now. People, listen, success is all about learning from your failures. Whatever failures you may have, whatever rejections that you may have, whatever you did that has gotten you here, learn from it and say, you know what? I got to do this differently this time. What got you here? Whatever it was, whether you was fighting, whether you weren't doing your work, learn from it. Because if you don't learn from it, you'll come around doing the same thing over and over. If you're seeing you, hey, how you doing? You back here again, huh? Because you didn't learn your lesson. You understand? Learn your lesson. What, why are you here? What got you here? And once you figure that out, then go and never come back. Learn from it. That's the key. Not, we're going to make mistakes in life, but learn from it. Don't make the same mistakes over and over. There's people 60 years old still making the same mistakes. You see what I'm saying? And they wonder why life keeps giving them the same bad cup of tea. Learn from it while you're 14, 15 years old. You see what I'm saying? Because guess what? Your whole life's ahead of you. You ain't got to say, oh, if it coulda, woulda, shoulda. You don't have any regrets. You feel me? So why you got your whole life ahead of you guys? Do it the right way. Make it right. All right? Man, uh, pretty much that's it, God. I just thank y'all for listening. I just want all y'all to have success and be successful. And uh, God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yes. Yeah.